Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Andrew Starr. I'm from the Rothman Institute in Philadelphia. And it's my pleasure to present to you what I think is some forward-facing information about how to do joint replacements in a very reliable way. Today's Innovation Theater presentation is brought to you by Siemens Medical Company in collaboration with Radlink Incorporated. And uh, we're excited really to bring this information to you. So thank you for taking a few minutes to spend with us to really look at uh, the future that's now and the potential for you that do hip, total hip replacements to learn about this and incorporate this in your practice. So as many of you know, uh, X-ray and C-arms have entered into the operating room for total joint replacements in a high percentage of cases, certainly not everyone. But surgeons use them because they like the kind of accuracy it can provide for them when they're doing their joint replacement surgery. So just like many other types of, uh, of X-ray guided types of surgery, joint replacement really dependent upon the surgeon's eye looking at the screen and determining whether the implants are in the proper position. Because if you have the implants in the proper position on the screen, it's more likely that they're going to match up when you look at the x-rays in the office. And of course, we believe that the x-ray in the office, the standing preoperative film, is what really we need to rely upon in judging our results. So the question is, how does a surgeon then integrate that data? Perhaps they have the x-ray up on the screen in the room, and then they have a C-arm picture on another screen, and they're sort of looking at the two things and trying to figure out what's the best way to position these implants, and, and are they going to be surprised at the end of the case? And remember, you have to consider a lot of things. You have to consider the position of the patient on the table, the angle of the x-ray machine. You have to... In, actually learn a little bit about parallax because if the image is more to the edge of the picture than the center, you may not get a very accurate representation. So this is where we started, which is, and I'll show you a few pictures here of reaming and taking a look at the cup and seeing if you like the position and then trying to get a sense of measuring the, the length of the femur on the pictures. And you know, having these x-rays in the operating room, which I've had for years, has been very helpful. But then the next step has really been to take this and convert this to data that you can analyze and really create the most accurate results for your patients. So the next step was what the Radling Company came out with and basically gave you measurements on the x-ray. And the measurements that we focused on were abduction of the cup, antiversion of the cup, as well as leg length and offset. And surgeons really, I think, appreciated this. The other thing that the C-arm, of course, provides you is knowing what the fit of your components will be. So if you now add having better measurements of leg length, offset, and cup position, uh, hopefully you've created a tremendous advancement. So here's some pictures of the Radling system, which is in the operating room on a screen. You can run it yourself. You can run it through, through, through touch screen by running it yourself, or you can have somebody put the information up and adjust it uh, by telling them what adjustments you want to make on the screen, and then you would adjust in the operating room. But as things would have it, technology has advanced, and we have other options and other ways that we can create a much more accurate representation for surgeons in the operating room. So I like to think of this as the future is now. So we have dealt with two-dimensional x-rays in the operating room with high-quality C-arms as provided by the Siemens company uh, for many years. However, there's more that we can get from those pictures. And the question is, how can we create three-dimensional representations of these pictures so that you can get the most accurate information in the operating room that's possible? You can try to infer from the standing x-ray, which you may have in the operating room, and the picture you're looking at, and maybe try to adjust the C-arm positioning in order to get the best possible picture. But of course, what happens with that is you have to take a number of x-rays and keep adjusting the patient and the table, and every time you move or you impact something, the patient shifts a little bit. So how can we create for you the most accurate representation of your patient actually in the operating room? So the next video, which I think you'll be very interested in, is a video of a patient having a three-dimensional image created. And the way that this is done is through a preoperative CAT scan or a preoperative MRI scan. So I hope you enjoy this video.
after the pre-op standing x-ray is registered with the CT, surgeons can analyze cup position with the single interoperative x-ray. Following cup impaction, the x-ray is merged with the 3D model. This model can then be synced to standing AP pelvis x-ray to account for pelvic tilt and rotation, resulting in true implant position for functional pelvis. I always enjoy looking at that video because it's really pretty amazing what can be done with technology today. I mean, let's face it, the notion that you can get a CAT scan or an MRI scan in advance for your patient and then literally accurately position your implants into the hip joint is really something that I would say is even astounding. It's amazing that that type of technology exists and it is available for you now. And that would include positioning of both the cup and the stem. Now, other technologies are available. You can do these things robotically. You can put a raise into the pelvis, but you really don't need that if you have the proper x-ray equipment, which really amounts to a C-arm, and then have a system like the Radling 323 system that allows you to really convert those images into something that's much more for, useful for you as a surgeon. So it's something that I'm very excited about, something that I have begun to use, and I think it really offers something that we only were able to offer through much more complex systems before. But is this really what we want as surgeons? I think to a great degree it is, but it does require that we get CAT scans and MRI scans, one or the other, in advance of the surgery so we can process that and put it into the system so that when we take a single x-ray during the surgery, we can convert it into the type of images that we need. Now, one advantage of this certainly is that it cuts down on extra exposure for the operating room personnel, but of course it's the inconvenience of the patient having to get the pictures. Sometimes there's issues with the payers uh, providing payments for these types of studies and whether they'll continue to do that, and that's been a question with other technologies. And then uh, moreover, there's the uh, inconvenience sometimes of physically getting these pictures into your hands, depending upon where your patients come from, if they come from a distance, like many of mine do. So there, the, the marriage now of the semen spin technology, which allows you to take a CT type of image in the operating room is something that really does add a tremendous amount to this type of process. So what are we talking about? So, you know, with the, with the integration of Radlink 323 into the semen system, this allows a surgeon to just take their normal preoperative x-rays in the office and then be able to offer a three-dimensional type of experience for their patients in the operating room and the accuracy associated with it without using a robot, without putting pins in the pelvis, simply using a C-arm and performing, in many cases, a, an anterior hip approach in a way that they were previously doing it, but just with a tremendous amount more information. Uh, it's a workflow that I think we need to go through and understand. So this, the workflow would simply be, take your x-rays in your office, uh, utilize, Choose a reference x-ray, which for most surgeons is the standing pelvic x-ray, and then use that within the 323 system. And each time you take a single x-ray in surgery, based upon the 323 processing, it would reference back to this original x-ray and orient the pelvis, and subsequently you can orient the femur as well, in such a way that you have much more useful information. Now the surgeon's in total control of this process. You can run it yourself with touch screen. You can have somebody in the room run it for you. It doesn't really make any difference. It's a matter of what your own personal workflow is. And one of the things that you'll see on this upcoming video, which we're very excited about, is it really doesn't take a tremendous amount of time. When I use this type of technology, uh, I would use it by taking the spin C-arm x-ray in advance, meaning when the patient comes in the room and we're setting them up even before we drape, we can take the, uh, the initial x-ray and have that processed and ready for the 323 system uh, before we even prep and drape and begin the surgery. So it really wouldn't add a tremendous amount of time, maybe a minute or two to the case, and then the processing could be done in the background uh, while you're working. So the next video, which is an amazing video, shows the first case at Cedars-Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles of a, of a semen spin 
system being used with the Rattling 323 software to generate real-time three-dimensional images for, for a patient who is actually on the table uh, and for the utilization by the surgeon to try to give you the kind of data that you really would love to have for every case. So I hope you enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Utilizing the Siemens CO Spin 3D C arm, surgeons can quickly acquire an interoperative CT in less than two minutes. With the embedded RadLink 323 software, a 3D model of the operative hip is generated. This 3D model is then meshed with the preoperative standing x-ray to map native pelvis and femur orientation. Once an interoperative x-ray is captured, the 3D model is merged and synced to standing position. This allows surgeons to manipulate both pelvis and femur anatomy to assess cup position, limb length, and offset. So I hope you enjoyed this little look into the future for what you can have in your operating room. And it's really not the future, it's now. Because the technology of SPIN, which is to be able to create CT style images for your patients right in the operating room, is here now through the Siemens SPIN system. And the technology of 3D, which we call 323 at Radlink, is here now and has incorporated both positioning of the acetabulum and the femur much like one might expect from robotics or other types of technology, but there's no pins in the pelvis. It's a simple system that works with your workflow, and you simply have to take a C-arm picture in order to accommodate this. The SPIN system is designed to rapidly collect the data that you need so that we can provide this for you right in the operating room. So when you get done with these procedures, there's no surprises. Well, when you take the patient into the office, number of weeks later and take a standing x-ray and ask yourself, did you achieve what you were trying to achieve? Uh, the answer is yes in the vast majority of cases. So what we're about here with this collaboration between the Siemens Medical Company as well as Radling Company is, is an integration of the technology of CT style spin C-arm pictures in the operating room along with three-dimensional analysis uh, for surgeons to virtually guarantee that we're gonna give you the kind of results that you're hoping for. Um, and in the long run, hopefully create the best outcomes for your patients. So on behalf of Siemens Medical Solutions and Radlink Incorporated, I hope you have a great remainder of your academy. I hope you enjoyed this little look into the future and what you can have really right now in your operating rooms. And I bid you a good day and a safe trip home. Thank you very much.